You know how K-dramas have this habit of being super grandeur in the beginning, and then having this major downfall halfway through? In fact, we've already discussed this in a previous video. So today, let's talk about the exceptions. The following K-dramas have a super slow and somewhat bad start, but then they redeem themselves remarkably. Number 1. Arthdal Chronicles Ah, Arthdal Chronicles. Probably the K-drama that received the most divisive reaction of all time. Despite boasting a cast full of big names like Song Joong Ki, Kim Ji Won, Jang Dong Gun, and also my biggest cinema crush Kim Ok Vin, the series had pretty low viewership ratings, which peaked at 7% and dropped to 4% near the finale. Personally, this lackluster performance can be blamed on how the series started. Since Arthdal Chronicles was a super ambitious project that took place in prehistoric Korea, its setting and world building were completely unfamiliar to the regular K-drama fan. As a result, it took ages to introduce the characters and lay out the story, and did so in such a contriving fashion that people could get bored halfway through. To be honest, the reaction was expected. The world of Arthdal was hard to grasp, the writing fell flat from time to time, and while the cinematography looked brilliant, there were a lot of unnecessary scenes, like those way too long spirit dances, that could have been replaced with more explanations. But to miss out on Arthdal Chronicles would be a major mistake. It was an impressive fantasy take, and the right blend of a heroic uprising and political schemings. The cast did a wonderful job at delivering their characters, and Sung Joon Ki's switch from broody cunning Saya to naive Eun Som was simply insane. The story became gripping, with plotlines constantly unraveling, and the mind battles were interesting, planned out, yet you could never really see who's winning. Characterization is also the series' strong forte, as it's easy to understand each character's motive and their roles in the show. Even the antagonists, Taegon and Taeilha, were well written with the audience understanding their actions well, but still being able to root against them. Number 2. Crazy Love For those who haven't watched the series, here's a short synopsis. In Crazy Love, Kim Jae-wook and Crystal Jung played No Go Jin and Lee Shin Ah, who are boss and secretary. Like most K-dramas, our male lead is a rich and arrogant guy, who is also narcissistic. One day, he suddenly got death threats. And decided to pretend he had amnesia to fool the perpetrators. No, coach. Yeah, 맞습니다. Meanwhile, Lee Shin Ah, our female lead, is a secretary who never gets a single day off. One day, she suddenly learns she's dying because of stress and decides to shit on her notorious boss for ruining her life. Long story short, they end up as pretend lovers, who actively try to torment each other. Alright, Crazy Love started out pretty cringy. Everyone was acting over the top. The characters were one-dimensional, and the camera work really highlighted the sheer ridiculousness of it all. The chemistry wasn't quite there, and it seemed that the Korean audience also agreed with me, seeing that the series' viewership plummeted from 3.4% in Episode 1 to a meager 1.9% in Episode 3. However, I was really glad to have continued the series, seeing its remarkable improvements in later episodes. The playful relationship between the main characters became so much more believable over time, and the series itself was hilarious, unpredictable, and extremely enjoyable. There were also a fair share of cliches thrown around here and there, but Crazy Love tackles them in its own unique way, and delivered a K-drama I'd say I've never seen before. And if you want intense chemistry and some really powerful and sensual kisses, I'd say go for this drama, because Kim Jae-wook and Crystal's kissing game was insane. Also, you won't need to worry about the supposed fatal illness thing, because we will have a happy ending. Number 3. Vincenzo The thing is, I almost dropped Vincenzo in episode 3, started the series because I follow the entire main cast, and Jeon Yo-bin and Song Joong-ki never disappoint. But aside from the somewhat hilarious first episode, where we see Song Joong Ki being this super cunning and scary and capable Italian mafia, only for him to get robbed the moment he arrived in Korea. The rest, 
up until episode four, was pretty darn slow. It didn't help that everyone kinda acted like assholes at first. And the female lead's father took up way too much screen time, despite his story being pretty banal. The interactions weren't fun nor were thrilling, making the first four episodes kind of a pain to cram through. Fortunately, everything started to pick up when the premise finally finished being laid out, and characters started to show their true colors. The female lead Hong Cha Young and her jumping ship to Gumga was a big highlight. And I cracked up real hard at the final boss reveal. Over time, Vincenzo proved itself to be a solid K-drama. It sticks to the dark comedy genre. while still maintaining an air of severity. I love its references to Korean culture, <laughs> past roles of the actors, and relatable humor. I also like the sheer ridiculousness that the series brought forth, and how it doesn't even pretend to be realistic. In addition, each and every character adds to the drama in their very own ways, and there are some very real character developments that get us addicted. Honestly, the rest of the series is a complete contrast to how slow the first four episodes were. So if you like found family, outrageous comedy, and slow burn romance slash partnership, I'd recommend the series. Number four, Prison Playbook. To be very honest, it took me years to start Prison Playbook, simply because I watched Miracle in Cell number seven and vowed to never watch anything set in prison ever again. But once I do start, there's no going back. The first few episodes of Prison Playbook were frankly uncomfortable to watch. We get to see a man in prison for saving his sister from a predator and leaving behind his successful career. Then we get to see the terrible inmate system, where officers willingly take bribes from prisoners, where the terrible get off easy, and where money and power provide you with comfort, even in prison. By episode three, I wanted to stop. It was hopeless watching the male lead, who has always been on the brighter side of things, facing all these mishaps these people who were out against him, and getting his perspective completely adjusted. But like the rest of this list, things get better. After the male lead transfers to a new place, we get introduced to a new set of characters and a completely new atmosphere. There was still realism and injustice, of course, but the series finally stayed true to its comedy genre. I easily got attached to the side characters, their stories and antics, and I felt proud of the male lead, just a couple of things that prove how good the writing was. The series will make you burst out in laughter and deliver meaningful messages at the same time. And by the end, I thought that 16 episodes was way too short. Number five, my liberation notes. For our final entry, we have a dark horse that you'd expect little out of, especially when this K-drama started with a 2% rating and competed against the star-studded R Blues. Initially, my liberation note started depressing and eerily similar to my mister, except that this time, the female lead was more relatable, seeing that she's just a regular person fed up with her regular life. At first, I disliked how somber the atmosphere felt, had an issue when a relationship started with the line, worship me, couldn't feel the chemistry between the three Lee siblings, and found the pilot episode exhausting, especially when I myself was stuck in a bad place. But my liberation notes took an evolution, Contrary to the dark color palette and famous depressing quotes that came out of it, this is a healing story, which can be relaxing and humorous. The slow burn romance between Mi Jong and Mr. Gu is among the best written relationships I could find, where both became healthier and better people out of it. What's most impressive of all, though, was my Liberation Notes' brand of realism. So realistic and simple, in fact, that I'd compare it to Mi Sung and put it above our blues. It was just a super mature, empathetic, and yet extremely thought-provoking K-drama that you only rarely stumble upon. What about you? How do you feel about these K-dramas? And have you watched something that got better over time? Let us know by commenting down below. And if you want more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe to Polydrama. We'll come back soon. See ya!